Oh God, we call. Oh God, we call. From deep inside, we yearn. From deep inside, we yearn. From deep inside, we yearn for you. I'd like to imagine that each year, God invites me to a party. God drops me a note that says, no gifts, casual dress, come just as you are. I'd like to imagine that I'm brave enough to go. I'd like to imagine that I decide I am worth it. So I get myself together, smudged glasses, sensitive ego, wrinkled shirt and all. I ring the doorbell a few minutes late on account of the fact that I lost my keys twice trying to get out the door. And I almost turn back to hide in my car, afraid that I might embarrass myself over appetizers and small talk. But then God answers the door and God says, you're here. And I smile because I am. And with every step past the threshold, I know that God is cheering me on. It's the pride of a parent watching their child take their first step. If I freeze, God is not disappointed. If I fall, God is not mad but I trust the invitation. And if I move closer, I know God celebrates. Friends, you've got mail. It's an invitation to dust off your shoes, to go deeper, to trust that you're worth it, to lose your keys and your faith, and to find them again, along with your worth. You are invited. We are invited again and again and again. This invitation is for you.
Welcome to Sunday Zoom Worship at El Sobrani United Methodist Church. My name is LaVon Taft, and I will be your liturgist for today. This community chooses to worship online together to keep our church safe. If you would like more information about our church or have any pastoral care needs, please contact our church office. Will you join me please to the call of worship? Before we were born. Before, before we, we took, took our, our first breath. breath. Before the week started. Before, before the, the year started. started. Before we said, I love you. Before, before we, we said, said I'm, I'm sorry. sorry. Before we figured out who we really are. Before, Before we figured out who we want to be. Before it all. God loved us. Unconditionally and freely. Fully and honestly. God loved us again and again this is where our story begins let us worship god good morning again and welcome everyone to el sobrana united methodist church whether you are worshiping with us live today on Zoom Sunday or later with Facebook or YouTube, all are welcome at this church. A way we encounter one another in church, whether in person or online, is we share a sign of peace, a tradition in our Christian church for a long time. Make sure that you have your gallery view on your computer. And on computers, it's usually in the upper right corner of your screen so that we can see you. Then we're going to stop sharing the screen and say hello to one another. Feel free to keep your camera off if you want to, uh, but it would be nice to be able to say hello to one another. Uh, and we are recording, so please keep that in mind. And I think today, why don't we try making the peace sign? May the peace of Christ be with you. And also with you. Everyone, let's make the peace sign. Our theme for this morning is again and again, God loves us. So we're going to be singing hymns that talk about God's love and God's mercy. Our opening hymn is the great Charles Wesley text, Love Divine, All Loves Excelling. And I would like to encourage you to sing um, with lots of energy and conviction from wherever you are. If you feel like it, maybe you'll even want to stand up and sing Love Divine, All Loves Excelling. Okay, I'm going to go down that road.
The first scripture reading for this week is found in the book of Ephesians, chapter 2, verses 1 through 10. You were dead through the trespasses and sins in which you once lived, following the course of this world, following the ruler of the power of the air, the spirit that is now at work among those who are disobedient. All of us once lived among them in the passions of our flesh, following the desires of flesh and senses. And we were by nature children of wrath, like everyone else. But God, who is rich in mercy, out of the great love with which he loved us, even when we were dead through our trespasses, made us alive together with Christ. By grace you have been saved, and raised us up with him, and seated us with him in the heavenly places in Christ Jesus, so that in the ages to come, he might show the immeasurable riches of his grace in kindness towards us in Christ Jesus. For by grace, you have been saved through faith, and this is not your own doing. It is the gift of God, not the result of works, so that no one may boast, for we are what he has made us created in Christ Jesus for good works, which God prepared beforehand to be our way of life. Hear what the Spirit is saying to God's people. Thanks, Thanks be, be to God. God. Continuing on our theme of love, our special music this morning is um, a, a rendition of Oh, the deep, deep love of Jesus. And unfortunately, I didn't discover this till I was working on the PowerPoint. The first verse of this did not get recorded. So I want to read the text to you, and then we will hear the band continue. Oh, the deep, deep love of Jesus, vast, unmeasured, boundless, free, rolling as a mighty ocean in its fullness over me. Underneath me, all around me, is the current of thy love, leading onward, leading homeward, to thy glorious rest above. Oh, the deep, deep love of Jesus. Oh, the deep, deep love of Jesus spreads his breath from shore to shore how he loves us ever loves us changes never never more how he watches o'er his loved ones die to call them all his own how for them he's intercede Deep, deep love of Jesus. 
Jesus, tis a heaven of hands to me, and it lifts me up to glory, for it lifts me up to Thee. All the deep, deep love, all I need. The second scripture reading for this week is found in the book of John, chapter 3, verses 14 through 21. And just as Moses lifted up the serpent in the wilderness, so must the Son of Man be lifted up, that whoever believes in him may have eternal life. For God so loved the world that he gave his only Son so that everyone who believes in him may not perish, but may have eternal life. Indeed, God did not send the Son into the world to condemn the world, but in order that the world might be saved through him. Those who believe in him are not condemned, but those who do not believe are condemned already because they have not believed in the name of the only Son of God. And this is the judgment, that the light has come into the world. And people love darkness rather than light because their deeds were evil. For all who do evil hate the light and do not come to the light, so that their deeds may not be exposed. But those who do what is true come to the light so that it may be clearly seen that their deeds have been done in God. Hear what the Spirit is saying to God's people. Thanks be to God. Our middle hymn features another Charles Wesley text. And uh, if you... I hope when Levon was reading our first scripture reading, you may have, uh, this may have caught your ear. But God, who is rich in mercy out of the great love with which he loved us, even when we were dead through our trespasses, made us alive together with Christ. By grace, you have been saved. Let us sing Depth of Mercy. <laughs>
Hello there. <clears throat> we come now to the time of sharing children's moments. So all you young people at heart, adult and child alike, come close. We're going to talk about love. One of my favorite Bible verses begins, For God so loved the world. I was thinking about that verse and wondering how great God's love is and how we could measure it. And this morning, I have several images to help us figure that out. Do you know what this is? Sure you do. It's a heart. It's an empty heart, though. Do you know what any of these are? Look at those pictures. This, can you guess? It's a thermometer. This is the kind we use when we're not feeling well and it helps us tell our temperatures. How about this one? Does that look like the same thing? No, that's probably for measuring the temperature of water or something. It's another way to measure things. These are beakers. They're used in chemistry and things to measure precise amounts of fluids. And these are measuring cups, the kind we use when we're making something. How much does God love us? Does he love us this much or this much? These are other things that are used for measuring. Could we measure God's love by how much we weigh? How much do you weigh? Do you weigh as much as an elephant? God loves us way more than that. There's a scale for standing on. There's the earth. These are other things that we measure with. Could we measure how long God's love is for us? Could we measure how far away God's love is? All the way to the stars? How about how long does God love us in time? This is how fast God would love us. What do you think? we were building something, we would use a ruler. If we were take, telling the time to see how far it is, how, sorry, how long it is from now till then, we could use a stopwatch or a clock. But to measure God's love, we need much more than these things. The biggest cookie you could bake, the tallest cake you could make, could never equal God's love. The biggest animal you could think of on earth could never be as large as God's love for us. The farthest star could never equal God's love for us. God's love goes from here, from everlasting to everlasting. You couldn't measure that with a watch. For God so loved the world that he gave his only son, and whoever believes in him shall not perish. Now, how do you measure love like that? We can't. We don't need to. But we do need to experience it. We help people see God's love with other symbols, like making a heart with our hands, making a heart with our arms. And with showing our love through the things that we do. Would you pray with me? I'm going to pray and then I'm going to ask you to answer. My prayer for you today is that you may understand how wide, how long, and how high, and how deep God's love really is. May you experience it, though it is so great that you will never fully understand it. Now repeat after me. Dear God, we thank you for your love. A love so great that you gave your one and only son. that we could have eternal life. In Jesus' name we pray. 
Amen. Thanks. Hold, hold a newborn in your arms. All at once you will understand the crook of your elbow and the cup of your palm as never before. Ordinary curves of the body transformed into a resting space. You were designed for love. And if you're lucky enough to hold a newborn in your arms and that newborn curls its tiny fingers around yours, making your hands look like hands of a giant, then time might stand still. And those around you might point and say, Look, that little one is holding you back. And in that moment, if you pay attention, you will catch a glimpse of the circle that love was meant to be. God is love, our resting place. With small hands, we hold back. By now, you may have noticed that Reverend Emily is not with us this morning. She is on vacation. And our preacher this morning is going to be the Reverend Debbie Weatherspoon. Reverend, Reverend Weatherspoon is United Methodist clergy and a candidate for the Doctor of Ministry degree in, publish, in public engagement at Wesley Theological Seminary in Washington, DC. Debbie served in full-time pastoral ministry for 20 years, both in California and Florida, where she was ordained. She is passionate about social justice and compassion as expressed through her deep faith in Jesus Christ. Her ministry these days involves leadership with the East Bay Moms Demand Action for Gun Sense in America and the National Board of Directors for Just Faith Ministries. Debbie is married to the Reverend Dr. Dale M. Witherspoon, pastor of Easter Hill UMC. They are the proud parents of a recent high school graduate, Wesley, a high school sophomore, Justice, and their dog, Zane. <clears throat> Reverend Witherspoon wanted to be with us today in person, but unfortunately, a schedule conflict came up, and so she has recorded her sermon for us. Let us hear the word. I'm a freckle face. I have freckles, beauty marks, and currently I have this. After I went face down on the sidewalk with my sunglasses on, I had a huge swollen thing here. In the healing process, I sported two beautiful black eyes along with a big forehead lump. When I catch a glimpse of it in the mirror or in the camera as I'm recording this, a made up word pops in my head asphalt. It's my weird Lenten humor. Probably any humor about Lent is weird, but you get it? Ash and fault for sin and confession. A play on the word asphalt. The sidewalk was uneven due to tree roots. Those who witnessed the fall said that they had seen others injured on this city sidewalk, and they urged me to report it so that the action could be taken, which I did. This all happened in December. Just a few weeks ago, I was in the area again for the first time since I had fallen, so I stopped to check it out. Asphalt, or something like that, had been added to smooth the unevenness, hopefully preventing anyone else from being injured. This past week, President Biden addressed the nation, marking the one-year anniversary of the pandemic. He spoke about looking for light in the darkness. What I appreciate about his speech is that he said that while acknowledging both the light and the darkness as existing. He spoke into the darkness. The grief of a nation was addressed while also offering hope. This year has been one long Lenten season. With failures as minor as sidewalk maintenance issues, 
to as major as a stumbling vaccine rollout to battle a pandemic. There have been injuries and there have been deaths. It is a dark time. In the introduction to her book, See No Stranger, Valerie Kaur recounts the story of her famous speech. It was New Year's Eve 2016. My friend, Reverend William Barber, had invited me to speak at the Metropolitan AME Church, a historic black church in Washington, DC. Like millions of Americans, I was still in shock over the results of our presidential election. I looked out at the crowded church and saw grief and anticipation in people's eyes. The future is dark, I said. But what if, what if the darkness is not the darkness of the tomb, but the darkness of the womb? What if our America is not dead, but a country that is waiting to be born? What if the story of America is one long labor? What if all of our grandfathers and grandmothers are standing behind us now, those who survived occupation and genocide, slavery and Jim Crow, detentions and political assault? What if they are whispering in our ear, you are brave? What if this is our nation's greatest transition? The crowd erupted in cheers and shouts and cries of hallelujah. Reverend Barber was on his feet, his great bare hands outstretched over me. What does the midwife tell us to do? I cried over the roar. Breathe and then push. <laughs> it's a great book. Now, this is Lent, not Advent, yet how we participate in those seasons is similar. Indeed, dark and light resonate with both. During Advent, we are preparing for a birth. During Lent, we are preparing for resurrection, a different kind of birth. We call it new life. The one whose birth we acknowledge in the Christmas season is the one whose dialogue with Nicodemus we hear, heard read today. Jesus is speaking to Nicodemus about being born again in the new way, from above, he says, saved from condemnation. Jesus is telling Nicodemus that he is loved. He is saying it's not about what you've done, it's about what you will do. It's night now, but I'm inviting you into the light of a new day and a new life, Jesus says. While the season of Lent might feel more like a march toward death as we look to the crucifixion of Christ, it is actually a journey of restoration and transformation, leading us closer toward our true selves and the divine. Observing a conscious Lenten season with our asphalt <laughs> can smooth out our unevenness, help us out where we tend to fall down as we draw closer to Jesus of Nazareth. As the letter to the church in Ephesus says, at one time you were like a dead person because of the things you did wrong and your offenses against God. Asphalt. In our United Methodist communion service, we hear these words, he healed the sick, fed the hungry, and ate with sinners. By the baptism of his suffering, death, and resurrection, you gave birth to your church, delivered us from slavery to sin and death, and made with us a new covenant by water and the Spirit. We are delivered from slavery to sin and slavery to death. We can choose not to be enslaved by the destructive values and forces of the culture and society in which we find ourselves. The mission of the church and the mission that Jesus is making clear to Nicodemus is that God's love is radical hospitality. It is not conditional, it is unconditional. It is reaching out and it is gathering us in. God is like a mother hen gathering in her chicks. We are created in Christ Jesus to do good things. God planned for these good things to be the way that we live our lives. As a community of faith, we are called to invite welcome, receive, and care for those who are strangers. 
We help newcomers to find a spiritual home and discover the richness of life in Christ. And individually, we say yes to God, accept God's love, and offer it to others. It began with ashes and the sign of the cross on our foreheads. The ash reminds us that from dust we have come and to dust we will return. The cross reminds us that from death comes life. From dust comes new life. In this season, we can look at our scars, literally and figuratively, through a practice of self-examination, which moves us from fault to healing. That which tripped us up can be made smooth so that we can walk on with faith. Amen. Amen. Thank you, Eileen. We now come to prayers of the people. Lord Jesus Christ, we pray for the church, your body in the world. Bless our bishops, clergy, lay leaders, and congregations with the courage to lead in these times and sustain them with your love. Deliver us, we pray, from the temptation of power, bondage of racism, class, and consumerism, and all that keep us from embracing our true shared identity as your beloved children. Free us from fear that we may bear witness to your liberating love in this broken world. Lord of life and love, Hear our prayer. We pray for this nation, for our president, our elected representatives, and all who have the power to make change. Open their hearts and ours to see and address the human needs of those suffering from the effects of this COVID-19 pandemic. Guide our leaders toward policies that uphold the dignity of our most voluble communities, especially immigrants and persons of color who are bearing so much of the suffering. Open their eyes and ours to see all who are ill and all who have lost their livelihoods 
as fellow human beings, not as expendable statistics. Lord of love and life, hear our, our prayer. prayer. We ask your protection for workers we often ignore, whose work sustain our whole society and who are now at risk for warehouse, grocery, and delivery workers, those who harvest and process our food, and all workers vulnerable to contagion. Turn the hearts of employers and policymakers to provide for their safety and security, and give us all grace to be mindful of one another's safety. Lord of life and love, hear, hear our, our prayer. prayer. For the scientists and physicians throughout the world who are working toward treatments and vaccines, that their work may bear fruit in ways that, sa that are safe, timely, and fully available to all. Lord of life and love, hear our prayers. For our local community here, for those who are isolated, lonely or fearful, and for all in need, that they may be sustained in faith, hope, and love. Lord of life and love, hear our prayer. For all who tend to the sick and for their families, especially doctors and nurses and first responders, that they may find continued strength and support and that they may be protected with needed equipment and needed leave and compensation. Lord of life and love, hear our prayer. For all who have died, especially for those in this time who have died alone, that they may be held in the company of all your saints. And for those who mourn loved ones, that they have not been able to accompany in their last hours. Lord of life and love, hear our prayers. Let us pray. God of the here and now, we have heard the words, for God so loved the world that he gave his only son, time and time again. We have read them on billboards, heard them in worship, and seen them on signs. And yet, we know there is a difference between hearing those words in passing and truly, deeply listening. We long to listen, God. We long to hear your truth. We long to know your love. Open our hearts and our minds. We are listening. As we open our hearts and minds to listen, will you please join me in the Lord's Prayer? Our Father, who art in heaven, hallowed be thy name. Thy kingdom come, thy will be done on earth as it is in heaven. Give us this day our daily bread and forgive us our trespasses as we forgive those who trespass against us and lead us not into temptation, but deliver us from evil. For thine is the kingdom, the power and the glory forever. Amen. We now come to the presentation of our tithes and offering and even during COVID, our church and our staff are still working, and our giving of financial gifts helps to fulfill and sustain our church. Giving is made easy. You can put your check in the mail. You can drop it in the envelope through the mail slot at the church office, or you can sign up for online giving so you don't even have to leave home. Whatever way you choose to freely give, we sincerely give thanks, no matter how small or big it is, all our blessings. 
And now, will you join me in joyfully singing to God our doxology? Please pray with me. Great and generous God, our lives are surrounded by things that steal our lives, inflict and destroy us. The tithes and offerings we share with you this day are a way of keeping us focused, not on the things that would take life away, but will renew our lives, hope, love, compassion, empathy. As the Israelites look to a serpent on a pole for healing, we look to a savior on a cross to be brought back to life in that holy name. Jesus, the Messiah, we pray. Amen. Our closing hymn this morning is Come Ye Sinners, Poor and Needy. And I wanted to tell you a little bit about the tune. So next slide, please. So I'm, I'm hoping you can see this. The tune, the tune name is Restoration. And I love the fact that um, Reverend Debbie in her sermon talked about Lent being a journey to restoration. Um, and you I hope you can see that the note heads are different shapes. You have uh, squares, triangles, and round notes. And the shapes were used to help people read music easily. And they would have actual, what they called singing schools during the 1800s. People would come, they would learn how to, to read music, to actually sight sing a tune by using these shapes. And the shapes had um, the syllables, do, re, mi, fa, so, which some of you may know. And the sound, the harmony of this type of music, this is called shaped note singing, has a very open, spare quality to it. And you are going to hear that on verses two and three of Come Ye Sinners, Poor and Needy. Dan will be singing the melody on two and three, and I will be singing the harmony. So you can follow Dan. Let us sing Come Ye Sinners. I will arise. I will arise, I will arise, I will arise. Come ye sinners, poor and needy. Weak and wounded, sick and sore. Jesus ready stands to save you. Full of pity, love and power. I will arise and go to Jesus. He will embrace me with his arms. In the arms of my dear Savior, oh, there are ten thousand charms. Come ye thirsty, come and welcome God's free Oh. 
This is a reminder that at the conclusion, <coughs> excuse me, at the conclusion of our worship service, please, please uh, stick around and join us for our time of fellowship and sharing. Um, and uh, we just, we really enjoy that time to share together as a community that is not being recorded. Let us hear now the benediction. Now may the love of God, the grace of our Lord Jesus Christ, and the power of the Holy Spirit be with you now and forevermore. Go now in peace. Amen. <laughs>